The Word in the World. You're listening to The Word in the World podcast, a resource to help make the world around you make sense. Let's zone in and share with each other our knowledge, encouragement, wisdom, and understanding. This is The Word in the World. Yo. Yo. Here we go. So what is this, man? What are we about to do here? We about to jam, brother. Jam session. Jam session number one. So rather than do, I guess, like a plan topic or something like that, right? Teaching. Yeah, teaching or, you know, like a discussion about something specific. Yeah. Right? This is going to be the random ramblings. Pretty much. Of the word in the world. So, yeah, we decided to call these jam sessions because, you know, it's kind of like when bands just get together and kind of like uh, figure it out. You yeah. know, they just they just start start getting busy and, and something dope comes from it. That's and it. that's pretty much what we intend to do from this. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, man, y'all, y'all going to like it. But we wanted to start off with a uh, segment. I don't know if I got any speed fans out there, but... Uh, you know, my man Dennis Hopper used to always be like, pop quiz, hot shot. <laughs> so we thought it would be cool to kind of uh, take that that phrase and uh, uh, match it with the segment, man. So mm-hmm. pop quiz, hot shot. All right. I wanted go. to uh, talk about the recent uh, Drake video, right? Okay. Uh, God's plan. Have you heard about it or seen it? Yeah. So basically, he gave out like a million dollars oh, over that. time. Yeah. Um, to like various people who were in need. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But um, I guess it, 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 it rubbed a lot of people the right way. Yeah. But then it, I guess it rubbed some people the wrong way. You know, like really? and one of those. Well, well, yeah, one of those people was Peter Rosenberg on Hot 97. Um, he actually went to Maryland. Shout out to oh, Peter yeah. Rosenberg. Yeah, um, but he uh, he was like, you know, it's cool, but is it like, is it cool to do it like publicly, like ah, and, and like record it and put it out question. there and make it like a video? Like, so I wanted to just ask mm. you about that. Like, is is that? I mean, we can we can talk, but is yeah. it biblical? But just like your personal feelings on it as a as a man of God, like how how do you? respond if, if somebody's like yo i want to i want to do this charity event man and we're gonna we're gonna record it and we're gonna put it online it's gonna be a big dope thing like yeah well here's my answer man i think like if you are hmm, let me think about this for a second yeah it's two ways to look at this right like so the way that drake did it from from the little bit that i saw yeah right is this just like a video of him just giving out the money and stuff like that right is that kind of what it is uh i want to be right as far as i know but is he like hey guys i'm giving out money right now you know what i'm saying is it like that or is it just like a video of him giving out the money it's it's a it's a production you know what i'm saying so he is he like saying like here i am giving money to people no but he is like you know going in stores and being like everything on me today guys like that type of thing yeah yeah and he's recorded himself doing those types of things i hear you so you could look at it and be like all right well you know obviously he you know he wants all this attention doing this good thing or this good deed or whatever right but i feel like him doing that mm. also might spark other people to be exactly. like exactly you know what i mean yeah. like yo I, I should give some, i got i got some extra yeah. i can give out some stuff too and i caught the tmz clip they asked him how does it feel to give out a million dollars and he said it's the best thing i've ever done in my life yeah so yeah, it's hard to take away from that fulfillment that he's feeling you yeah know what I'm saying? yeah but it, and i think i think um and i think like drake hit up peter rosenberg and was like dog like he was kind of saying that same thing like this was the best day of my life or best you know like yeah. series of events in my life and like you kind of like just taking a crap on it you know yeah but i think it's different from somebody like um you walking down the street and we're talking about celebrities and influential people yeah, like right. if you walking down the street and you see a homeless person and you like yo yo dog, turn the camera on i'm about to get you hundred dollars <laughs> like, you know what i'm saying like get this get this get this yeah that, it's a little different than you being like yo i want to go on a giving spree yeah and record it and inspire people to like do some major giving. Yeah. you know i, I mean think man that's a little different i've seen people make facebook live videos to give like five dollars right to, to somebody on the corner well even like um nothing food, wrong with that food but, drives and stuff yeah. like you know like 
sometimes it's it's really like the energy behind it. Like right, sometimes right. you could tell the person's like, like look at me, I'm this, good. Like yeah, like yo, charity work, son. But yeah, yeah. Th- some of those, some of those, some of those. <laughs> I guess you just gotta you gotta like allow the spirit to give you how the word says. You know, test the spirit. You know what I'm saying? And like you, you'll you'll know if. You got to figure out, like, you know, who, the the motive behind it, man. But mm-hmm. whatever. I think that I think it was really cool. Yeah, I like it, man. I think um, if it inspired anybody to be, like, a giver, something like that, then it accomplished the purpose. Like, so what? Even if he's arrogant. I did it. I'm doing it. I'm giving away. Whatever. Yeah. Like, and giving is an interesting thing, man. Yeah. Like, I remember... I, I thought I I I'll put it like this like I I always had a heart to give mm. right just just in general mm. like um but I didn't understand like the magnitude as, as to which people give like regular people like yeah or like for instance like when I first started dating uh Rashida uh we'd be hanging out and like you know homeless person would come up to her and like be talking to her yeah and she'd give the person like twenty dollars or something i'm not trying to brag but i would be like yo what are you doing like yeah. giving them twenty dollars but i would see the person's reaction and then you know like we we had conversations about it and it made me understand like yo like giving just giving like you know what you have on you or mm. whatever like yeah or or your what you can spare like that's 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 cool but you ain't really if, giving, if you ain't really you giving ain't missing that, that. You, they not and it's not impacting them the same way like yeah if you give somebody like a hundred dollars who all day people are walking by them giving them like coins or whatever like that's really really gonna impact them you know what i'm saying yeah like, yeah and it just it just made me feel better about like all right like you know, it's okay to be a little bit more generous with giving to strangers. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never, ever, I never was that person to, like, you know what I'm saying? Just, yeah. Well, I, I ain't going to fake, man. Like, I, I recently started giving stuff, yeah. right? The, the word had to kind of, you know, like, <laughs> put me well, in, like, you, a figure four, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Just get me to give something. Yeah. But, um, like, I used to always be, like, like you know, of the opinion, like, I'm going to give this dude my money and he going to go, you know, buy some liquor with it or yeah. some drugs with it or, you know, like, just squander it on something. Yeah. You know, he just squandered all the, all his other money, so he mm. squandered this too, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, like, that's so ignorant. I'm just being real transparent right now, but that's, it's so ignorant, you know what I mean? And yeah. then the scripture that kind of messed me up, or that got me, you know, away from that kind of ignorant thinking is mm. when Jesus is like, you know, he's like, look, man, if you if you give, you know, he said, you gave me something to drink when I was thirsty, you gave me something to eat when I was hungry, you clothed, clothed me, me when I needed yeah. clothes, yeah. and then the people are like, when did we do all that? Yeah. And he was talking about whenever you did that to the poor, you really did it for him. Yeah. So when I saw that, I'm like, dang. We want to know how we can give to Jesus. Mm. Like, he say it right there. Yeah. Like, you want to do something for him? That's how you do it. You know Talk what I mean? about the orphans, the widows. Yeah. The and so when I saw that, man, it kind of changed my perspective. But before that, I wasn't trying. Either I wasn't trying to give it or if I gave it, I did it to kind of show people, like, yeah, I'm oh, a I'll giver. Be giving. I'll, I'll be, be giving, giving. dog. <laughs> I'll be giving, yeah, dog. Yeah, what you give? <laughs> you ain't getting that? Uh. It's judgmental, dude. <laughs> Nah, man, yeah, I understand that. Good stuff, What's been man. going on, though, man? Ah, this like, podcast is like this is everything right I now. Know. For, it really is for me. I, it's so exciting mm-hmm. that like everything else is, is kind of bland in comparison. Yeah, at the moment. Yeah, you know. What I'm Yo, saying? it's crazy to me that like the listeners don't. They don't obviously see what's going on day yeah. to day with us and everything that God has been doing, like yeah. just concerning the podcast. I'm not even talking about like our private lives, mm-hmm. like just the podcast. Yeah. Like it, they, this this is not this ain't a regular <laughs> show. It's not. It's it's gonna be so much cool. Like we have episodes out for months and months yeah, and months that are already thing. like established. Yeah. Not not saying that we recorded them already. Like. The ideas and the concepts and the planning and everything for them, he's already <laughs> like given us. So it's it's just crazy, man. Yeah, and that's not including like interviews or like you know like uh, any any kind of added thing besides just our dialogue. Like yeah. So I gotta tell you something, right? Uh-oh. Cause you're talking about interviews, right? Yeah. So uh, one of the listeners who was giving me feedback said it would be cool if you guys like whenever we're talking about like the whole 
like husband, wife, wife, oh, hu- not wife. No. Husband, wife thing. No. Like, nah. <laughs> you already know where I'm going. <laughs> He's like, nah, man, that's the last thing we need. <laughs> but, <laughs> but to have like a woman's perspective oh, yeah. on some of this. Oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Nah, just, to, just to see what see what they got to say. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause I think uh I think like, you know, it's easy it's easy to talk about that kind of stuff when there ain't no woman in the room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? But nah, you bring a woman in here and I mean, what see, you see if we start what, sidestepping what that word a little bit. <laughs> what you saying? To bring we can bring the wives in and, and see what they gotta say. Yeah, you just know? see see what they, they got. They gotta man. finish them dishes first. <laughs> <laughs> it's like nah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, man. I can't with this dude, man. <laughs> oh my God. Yo, it's funny because I know I'm about to say something. Yeah. And I'm just watching your reaction because you'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> like, you'd be like, yo, wait, what? <laughs> oh man. But yeah, definitely going to get the ladies in here, you know, some different perspectives and stuff. People were asking too, like, are those our wives on the intro? And oh, what? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that is uh, Jason's wife, Rashida, and my wife, Ashley. Yep. And my son is at the beginning. He's the one who said, it's the word in the world. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's him, man. Young so, Mace. Uh, yeah. Yeah, man. That's great. You know, it's a family affair. That's right. Yeah, man. It's, yeah. It's, it's funner that way. Yeah, it is, you know. That's an interesting thing you just said about like it being funner that way because um mm-hmm. you know I used to kind of be thinking like oh man like when you get married like you're not going to have as much fun as you did before yeah. like oh you're not going to be able to hang with your boys and da 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 but yo man if you're if if your relationship is centered in in Christ you know what I'm saying and like you guys are both like you know trying at least to to please God and stuff like that yeah man, like your relationship is fun like yeah, yeah you kind of want to be around each other more and more and more and more and more and like see each other grow and see each other fulfill each other's purpose and stuff like that like like you enjoy seeing the other person become more disciplined and you enjoy you know just seeing like new endeavors become uh um i guess like uh manifested and and just hanging out with each other too like i don't i don't mind just you know what i'm saying like i don't i don't all right i'll say this I'm not gonna. I'm not the dude that's like, yo. I'm bringing the wife with me, bro. Like, yeah. we going out tonight. Oh yeah, the wife coming. Like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not it. But best believe, like, I will be. You know what? <laughs> well, I say your wife in the other room, boy. I know. Right, right now. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. But nah. I'm <laughs> <laughs> she is here. <laughs> but nah, it's like I. I. I have no. I just like being around my wife. That's yeah. what I'm saying. You know what's crazy, man, is is like how hesitant we are to even say like something like that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like whatever, man. I like I like being around my wife though. Yeah. She funny. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She uh she cool. We can have a good time. We can laugh or whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. And um like you said, man, like growing together. Going through the process of this whole, you know, this whole thing, like, you know, walking with God and kind of just watching each other, like, blossom, Mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, becoming more joyful and peaceful, you know, all the fruits of the Spirit is manifesting in your life and stuff like that. But y'all going through that whole thing together Mm. and y'all seeing each other, you like, make sacrifices and stuff like that to become better people. Yeah. You know, it's a beautiful thing, man. And you also know where you both came from, like. That's that's really it. Yeah. yeah. Cause you like, oh man, like yeah. like for me, like my wife has seen me get saved. She seen mm. me just yeah. she seen me be like a, a complete idiot, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But she still was like, I still like this dude, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like I'm I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait it out and be patient. Yeah, she and uh, I mean that's a that's that's the thing that I think a lot of women go through, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Where especially if uh if they they're already in a in a nice walk with God, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And they like somebody, but they're like, then this dude, like, you know, I want him to be my head, I want him yeah. to be my leader, but it's just a few things that like he's not he's not focused, you know what I'm saying? Like he's hmm. not Christ is not his head, Philly. Yeah. He's not fully submitted, and it's hard. But I want to, you know, stick around. And you know, the word says like the salvation of one can come, you know, if if the other person is is saved and stuff yeah. like that. Um, and I need to, I need to. I'm not gonna look for that scripture right now, but uh-huh. y'all can look it up. But it's basically saying like, you know, if your spouse is saved, 
you, it, they can kind of like vouch for you. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, but it's it's totally different though when you're in that situation. Like she used to go, she used to really be like having to bite her tongue about certain things mm. and just like you know, just kind of like just swallow her pride and be like, yeah. just trust God that I was gonna come around. And she actually, and I mean, I'm sure she'll come on here and talk about it at yeah. some point, but she used to pray for me to be broken, dog. Like, yeah. it was that serious to her, you know what I'm saying? Like, people think like, oh, you know, you get saved and, and da -da -da, like, it's just, it's just like, oh yeah, you come to Christ and you, you a new person. Like, yeah. yo, nah, this is a very serious matter. Like, yeah. spiritual renewal <laughs> is not a game, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like. And how we were just talking about in the previous episode <laughs> yeah. of like rejoicing and suffering. Right. It took her that I, I respect I'm realizing now I respect what she did in terms of like praying for me to to be broken and yeah. totally rely on God because she understood that spiritual concept of like suffering is okay. She wasn't trying to change you. Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? She wasn't like, hey, look, you you really need to get God mm -hmm. in Christ. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. she but she prayed. Mm. She lived her life mm -hmm. in a godly way. She suffered through, you know, that kind of stuff in order that that you, you know what I'm saying, would find yeah. them. You know, and praying praying that you were broken. Like that's some serious I know. Like that's some real understanding behind that. And we're you know not what I mean? talking when we were boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah. Like with this is marriage. Marriage. Yeah. 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 It's like living together. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like and she's like Man, like break this dude so yeah. he comes to Christ. Like, I think I so think that that's a harder. You. you know what I mean? That's a harder situation than if you both were unsaved. Mm. You know how it says like we should we should um, not be unequally yoked. Yeah, but we should be equally yoked. You can say it both ways, right? Yeah. But like that's a tough thing to like to be saved and then to be like waiting. Yeah, you know, on the other person, and, I used and then to not be to be like some. Bro. Huh? I used to be flagrant. I yeah, used to be well, you still some, like. Shut up. <laughs> I used to be like, yo, Jesus. I don't need no Jesus. I like the Bible. You know, I could un I understand the concepts in the Bible, but the Jesus part, I don't, yeah. I don't need that. Yeah. What we need Jesus for? Like, I know, you know, a reaping sow. I know I need some wisdom. I know, yeah. I, I, you know, I used to be so flagrant. She used to just sit there like, dang. <sighs> Uh, 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 uh. Break this dude, man. Yeah. Break, and the prayer was answered. I about to like, say, yeah, because I was broken. You, yeah, you, and, yeah, and my I, story. Yeah, my story is crazy. <laughs> That's a whole nother episode. Yeah, but man, uh. was it worth it? Yeah, was man, it worth it, bro. Like, shoot, just the freedom now that we have in life is all due to Christ. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm not just talking like, oh, that we, you know what I'm saying, are like self-employed and, mm. you know, we don't work for anybody. That kind of freedom. Like, that's, right. that's cool. Like, yeah. to have our own time and be on our own schedules. Yeah. But I'm talking about a different kind of freedom, bro. Freedom mm. of thought. Mm. Not being constricted by, like, guilt or, like, mm. um, uh, that's just it yeah sexual like deviance yeah or, like um just bad desires whoa, or, whoa, whoa, whoa. hold on man Un unpack some of this oh, no. like all right no no because no, no. uh, you're talking about like a couple who's like because you talked about guilt yeah right sexual deviance yeah. right and what was the last thing you said just bad desires just bad desires and stuff like mm -hmm. you think about that right like if you guys are not both in Christ, you got to deal with all that stuff. You yeah. got people, you know what I'm saying, who like hold on to the past or the other person's past mm -hmm. for decades and stuff like that because they couldn't forgive somebody. Mm -hmm. And they're constantly bringing up old stuff. Mm -hmm. But when you come to Christ, and Christ is like, nah, you got to forgive all that. Mm -hmm. Then you drop all that. That's yeah. a load that's gone now. So yep. you can actually just flow in a conversation without somebody be like, hey, remember that time yeah. you did that dirt? You and know what I mean? You kind of start to... <clears throat> When you start to under, understand the kingdom of God, yeah, and when you start to understand the kingdom of, of Satan, yeah, um, then you start to really, really understand like why you need to be exercising that power, and right. you know we, we'll talk about that more in another episode. Yeah. But it's that whole idea of subduing and all of that, right? So yeah, you start yeah, yeah. to understand like man, always getting deep, man. Shut up, can't have no regular jam yeah, session. My bad, man. bro. <laughs> too, too spiritually powerful, but nah, man. Because you, you start to understand like yo, uh -huh. man, like we we. We, our thoughts are so um, important mm -hmm. to, to everything in our life. You right. know what I'm saying? And it's yeah. like, man, like, because you, 
you could you could sit and think about you know past relationships and all uh, of that type of stuff and then but but what what satan does is like he's just looking for the smallest thing to like use and accuse you mm -hmm. and manipulate you you know what i'm saying and wow. then all of a sudden you'll think of you thinking about a person and then like man, let me go on instagram or yep. facebook and look let me at, see what they, what they doing nah, yeah. man, let, me, let me text them real quick like yeah. just to say what's up like it, he just he just does the subtle thing yeah what does but, it say it say uh be careful not to give the uh the devil a foothold footholds become strongholds yes sir. you know what i'm saying you let them let them what give them an inch here take a mile kind yeah. of thing give them give them an open door and <laughs> watch them work and walk in he would destroy it, you and it's like you you see <laughs> You see this happen to people like in 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 the media in the public eye where you're like yeah. you know why are they a chronic cheater like this dude looks like he has everything in the world mm -hmm. like why is he doing that yeah you know what I'm saying and it's because I mean I I'm not I'm assuming here but a lot of these people are trying to do things in their own power you know what yeah. I'm saying and it's like you can't overcome like a, a spirit of lust in your right. own power right yeah yeah that's that's real man. Yeah, I don't know where I'm going with that. I'm just ranting. Yeah, but nah, I mean, like, you were talking about, like, how, you know, you got that freedom just in your marriage, oh, right? Yeah, so, yeah, like, yeah. I was going to bring you back to the sexual deviance thing, but you just, you went there already. So, it's like, you think about, like, how somebody in the marriage might be struggling with, like, pornography mm -hmm. or something like that. I've been there. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, like, full-fledged, like, you know, watching porn, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like sitting in front of TV every night or nothing like that. And not saying, you know what I'm saying, I'm not judging anybody who's dealing with that yeah, either, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But... I thought mine was cool because it was more subtle because it was right on my cell phone. So you'd be like, ah, let me just mm, real quick. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let me close that app. I'm good. I got. I got. I got what I needed. Got you know what I'm saying? Got my fix real quick. Yeah. But it, but then I started seeing like, yo, it's. I can't. I can't go without it. If I got a second and she ain't around, let me take a glance take real a little quick. Looky you know look. what I'm saying? Just see. Yeah. Just see what's new. You're a little you know freak what I'm boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then I'm like, yo, like this. Can I can I not do this? Mm. And when you go to say, can I not do something? That's when you start to realize, yo, you you a slave to something, bro. Mm. You know what I mean? And you know, Paul is like, you shouldn't be a slave to nothing. I'm under the subjection of nothing but Christ. So when I went to go try to see if I could get rid of it, that's when I knew I had a little bit of a struggle on my hands. Wow. You know, that's the that's the beauty of of, of of not you know the only beauty of Christ, but that's one of the many things, right? It says Christ, He came to destroy the works of the devil. All of so I can just go to him and be like, hey look, I'm struggling. And that's how I talk to him too. Like yeah. like I'm struggling with this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I need I really need some help. Yeah. I can't do it by myself. Here's my my requests, my petition. I thank you for all you've done already yeah. in my life. And now I'm just asking that you just take this out because I can't glorify you the with way I, I, I desire to yeah. with this. And then the other thing is too, right? It's like just on a practical level, right? Like your wife find out you've been looking at porn, whether it be on your, you know, your cell phone or the TV or whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like she don't care. Porn is porn, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? And she's intimidated and assaulted by it you mm. know what i mean it it's, goes a lot it, it, it yeah. gets deep with that with that right there and just going into the whole freedom you know back to the whole freedom thing like imagine what it would feel like you know to not have to hide that from your wife hmm. the the guilt that you don't have to deal with right and and just the like not having to lock your phone and not having to mm. you know what i'm saying delete all your your browser history and freedom. your cash in images you yeah. know what I'm saying you all deep in like google technology just <laughs> trying to cover your tracks to not have to do any of yeah. that man it, that's freedom yeah that's what it looked like and like i know i know married couples who can't leave their phone around the other person yeah for fear of what they might see in their phone that mm, ain't freedom that's not freedom you in bro. bondage to whatever to whatever you got going on that phone you in bondage to wow. it man you know wow. what i mean yeah and bro. on like an, on even with that same note just <clears throat> just the sexual you know weapons of of the kingdom of darkness <laughs> <laughs> bro what are you into man i don't know but you look so <laughs> <The> sexual <laughs> weapon <laughs> <laughs> look man oh don't, don't get on god. me for my eloquence this is the word of the world after dark this man, is after is, dark, man. oh my god <laughs> but nah man i realized like <laughs> I kind of was talking about this in the first episode, but like Fifty when shades of the word of the world, <laughs> this is the like, <laughs> like you, need to, you need to renew your mind, bro. <laughs> you need to renew, <laughs> repent. 
All right, I'm done. But nah, but I um, <laughs> I I was so caught up with porn that mm. I had to like. I'm one of those people that I I I hit rock bottom and yeah. then I'm like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so I had to like hit rock bottom with it to the yeah. point where it was like. You know, it was affecting my marriage type oh, of wow, thing, and yeah. not just not just talking about like me hiding my phone and stuff like that. Yeah. I never, she she wouldn't she didn't have that type to be looking through phones, but yeah. like, you know, it was just in my like desire and stuff like that. Like, if I'm if when I in the mood to be sexual, uh-huh. if I'm not going to my wife and I'm going to the phone yeah. to look at porn or the computer, that's yeah, that's crazy, that, bro. Like, yeah. yeah. And then it was just like, and, and we you, we know that this is a this is like an epidemic, bro. Yeah. And it's not just men; it's mostly men, but women go through this too. Right, but right, it's like yeah. a lot of dudes out there deal with that stuff, and we don't talk about it. Talk but about it's like, it, yeah. But it's like we we know what it's like to not sometimes even want to be with your wife because porn got such a stronghold on you. Yeah. And you could look at whoever you want, and you like, oh, whatever. Yeah. But then when you re- get that freedom, and like, I, I'll just say now, like, as a testament to mm-hmm. the strength in, in Christ, yeah. um, or the strength of Christ and just the Holy Spirit working, yeah. like, I haven't watched porn probably in, like, it'll be three years this this august wow man yeah that's big yo. literally congrats you know what man saying? thank yeah. you yeah so like i just but i but it's only because of christ you know uh-huh. what i'm saying like uh-huh. because i told him like that's Look, it i'm yeah. giving this to you yeah. you know what i'm saying like i don't know how i'm gonna feel what i'm gonna do i don't know how how i'm gonna like work out my sexual activity and desire in in marriage but yeah i'm gonna give it to you man like yeah. whatever and it's worked out great yeah you know what I'm saying? like yeah. i didn't know like that it could be this good so yeah i mean you kind of remind me like of myself too because it's been i want to say i've been i've been on this path man since the end of 2014 dang and it took me about like six months to realize that that was like really a problem. Mm. So I would say like maybe around 2015 or so. I'm wow. probably right around three years too, man. Yeah. But I remember like one day I found myself just like with my phone, and I'm like <laughs> creep. I'm like, yo, this is sick, man. You're a creep. I'm sick. <laughs> I might be sick. I'm a sick person. I'm sick inside. <laughs> <laughs> but then I, you know, I went into prayer, man, and it mm. was like, um, it was a, it was a switch of the desires. Like I just, I just desire you, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I desire, I desire Christ, and I don't really desire this. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But it took, it took like really the work of Him, yeah. to really make that happen. You yeah, know what I'm absolutely. saying? Like I couldn't do it, I couldn't do it in my own strength. So it was, it was prayer that brought that to pass. Absolutely. And if you man. want Him bad enough. You know, it's it's not difficult to put down anything yeah. when you got his power, mm. you know, working for you. You know, yeah. he came to destroy the works of the devil. So yeah. anything, and it, it's, I'm sitting here, working. I'm like really jogging my mind right now. Like, what are the other things that he's like freed us from? Wow, there's a lot. There's a lot, bro. I mean, when we, if we're just talking like personally, I mean, for me, I, I guess one thing would be like drinking. I'm mm-hmm. not saying I was a, a heavy drinker at all. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I wasn't. I wasn't like you know one of them dudes who had to have a beer every night. But you know, if we had liquor in the crib, you know what I'm saying? Like I wouldn't think twice about. Oh, let me just grab a drink. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't think like, oh, like I have stuff to do tonight. I shouldn't be drinking. You know, like yeah. And now it's to the point like glory be to God. Like I don't really think about drinking at all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like. When I do drink, it's kind of like, I'll be like, oh, what did I do that for? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I was much better off sober-minded. Kind of like, like I really didn't need that I whatsoever. I did not need that whatsoever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, like I, got the this, other now night, I got this headache. <laughs> yo, the other night, my mans and them, they had like a, um, they just came back from Brazil, my, this couple that we hang out with, like yeah. really close friends. Uh-huh. And, you know, they, 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 were, they had like a Brazilian feast. Mm. And so... Yo, man, caparinhas, cachaça, all this liquor, crazy. It's ba- wow. cachaça is like Brazilian uh, rum, basically. Okay, it's I didn't real know that. like it's sugary, and and they had amazing drinks. Man, this is the first time, and I don't I don't think this has ever happened, dog. I couldn't mm-hmm. drive home. 
Rashida had to drive. <laughs> I, and I was I was I wasn't even like hammered, but yeah. I haven't been drinking, so like it was just like I was like, yo, I can't, I'm not driving home, not in DC. Yeah, yeah. I ain't about to drive from northwest to southeast right now. Nah, nah I'm son. good. Yeah, <laughs> but that's good, man. But I it's mean, that type of stuff that I yeah. noticed, like little subtle stuff that I really even even asked for. Yeah. That he's given us power over. Like yeah. Nah, yeah. you don't need that. I remember, like, I used to, I used to, um, with the drinking thing, like, I, <laughs> we used to have, like, these things, we called them shop parties, yeah. right? So everybody would bring over different kind of liquor and stuff like that. And I had this, it was uh, a book, like, it's called The Big ASS Book of Shots, yeah. like that, right? And so, you know, like, I would call myself, like, a little bartender, man. I'd be, you know, mixing up things that taste like things you're familiar with, like Big Red or, you know what I'm saying, like a lemonade or, you know, all yeah, that yeah, kind of yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. right? And it got to the point where at first I was like having fun with it, you know, it's an entertaining kind of thing. But then I like couldn't be just around my house like without having something to drink. Wow, you know what I mean? And my yeah. wife will always be like, "Why are you drinking right now? Like we're just we're just watching uh, the news, <laughs> the TV. <laughs> like why are you, why do you have a drink in your hand? You know?" Mm-hmm. And I'm like, "Ah, whatever. I'm distinguished. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like uh, you know, I'm a grown man <laughs> grown now. Ass man. Yeah. <laughs> grown ass man. You know, but like." <laughs> You know, what's interesting, though, is, like, I didn't even notice it when it faded away. Like, when I started, like, walking, you know, like, with Christ or whatever, like, it's like the, the whole desire for it mm. just kind of faded without yep. even me, like, really paying attention to it. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And it's to the point where, like, I went, like, you know, I guess, like, a really long time and somebody was like, you know, you want a beer or something? I'm like, yo, I ain't had a beer Word. in, like, three months. When I was drinking Coronas, like, every single night, just hanging around the house but then i just didn't want it anymore you know so it's like you start to see like he just he starts to work and you don't even really you don't even realize like how (coughs) much he's working in your life sometimes you know what i'm saying things you're not even Mm -hmm. paying attention to he's making happen and doing and working out for you you know like he's giving you new desires purging you purging you you renewing you purging and renewing man it's amazing it's crazy stuff yo but it it's the submission that that leads to that right yeah because if you're rebelling against the spirit if you're rebelling against god he can't he can't do those things because you're mm. literally resisting that renewal you know what i'm saying hmm. so that's just a testament to to you and your willingness to submit you know what i'm saying and he's yeah. like all right i'm gonna do things that you don't even you don't even know that i'm really doing them you know yeah. what I'm saying? you didn't you're not asking for these things i'm just gonna do these things yeah so okay when you say submit right mm-hmm. like just for anybody who's listening yeah. right like what does that real submission wow look like yeah. you know what i'm saying because you hear people say it all the time you know what i mean like you need to submit you need to submit your life to christ man you try to do an episode right now i'm not I'm man tired, dog. you trying to go into the whole yo let's do a submit episode right now jay <laughs> get out of here <laughs> but like yeah, yeah man. man what is what is that like for somebody who is, you know, like just coming into it all yeah. or, you know, like uh, trying to pick it back up. These things, these like turns being tossed around, yeah. but like what give they it mean to God. for real. Yeah, give it, let go mm-hmm. and let, let go God and, let God. and yeah. you know, uh, Submit your will bring your God. flesh under submission, yeah. subjection. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Yo? Man, so. And what that look like? What does it look like? Yeah. Right? That's a so it's, it's a, it's a, it's a. A somewhat easy question to answer, but it's it's so like case by case, right? Right, right. Because right. it could mean, um, you know, how we're talking about like uh, uh, we could use pornography again, right? Yeah. So if you get to the point where you know, and this happens to some people where like they, they, they literally can't stop doing it, it's ruining their life. Like yeah. they're, they're late for work, they're messing up assignments, like they're not picking their kids up. Yeah. Something like pornography is like when. You know, you get to that point where it's like destroying your life and, mm. and making your life chaotic. Yeah. Uh, I think for that instance, submitting is going like, look, God, like I have no control over this circumstance mm. anymore. I don't mm-hmm. know what to do. I feel like my life is about to just go down the toilet. Yeah. I I, I, I have to just, I don't know. It, it's, it's that point of like just the ultimate letting go. Hmm. But it it also sometimes is when you, I guess, when you're consciously aware of the, um, you know, those who humble themselves will be exalted. And when you know God's word and when you understand him, 
you understand a little bit more like okay like i can actively submit you know what i'm saying huh. like yeah so it, it's a again not my will but your will type of thing that's <clears> really <throat> that's really like the key statement right yeah. there right it's like, like it's about the wills because he gave us free will to mm. do whatever we want to do wow right yeah so you can do literally anything you yeah. want and he's like yeah that's part of my law is that i gave you a free will yeah but but the submission go ahead no uh, i'm gonna say like but, but to your point right it's like when you really kind of scale back mm. right it's either god's will or, or not god's will then whose will is that right if it ain't god's will then whose will is it that's what you, you know is, it, is it really your will or is it like the will of of who <laughs> right. you know what i'm saying yeah right so it's like uh it's it's interesting man because like uh like we we think you know when we think of free will you're like oh i'm just gonna do what jay wants to do i'm just gonna do what marcus wants to do you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. but like if it ain't if you ain't doing what god wants you to do then you doing what the enemy wants you to do you, you are you know what i'm saying absolutely and i think that's one of the uh you know like uh like when we talk about like the kingdom of god anything that's not of the kingdom of god is of the kingdom of, of satan. satan you know what i'm saying that's what he says not and, us yeah i mean not that's even to really is. take it there but it's just like a point that kind of has to be made just to kind of kind of clarify it's either you are like jesus i think jesus says it when he says anybody who's not for me is against it's me against me so it, there is no neutral ground no, i guess is the point right there's no neutral ground you can't just say oh you know i'm just i'm just gonna do my thing mm-hmm. you don't really have a you know mm-hmm. a, a, a independent thing no, you know what i'm you saying don't. even your independence is already rebellion <laughs> rebellion so i just thought that was interesting man that yeah was an interesting point yeah but and it's one of those things too where you find that people, you know, will say like, you know, like I, I love God, man. Like I'm, yeah. I'm, I, I'm not like you can't tell me I don't love God. Like yeah. I'm not telling you that. He's telling you that, man. Yeah. He said the only way you can get to me is through my son. Wow. And the only way you get to him is through the Spirit. The Spirit has to leave you to lead you to Christ, and Christ gets you to me. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. Mm. I'm not he's not I'm the fleshly person Jay or Marcus or whoever that's saying like you know like I don't I'm not even, we don't walk around going repent but you know yeah. <laughs> just in our lifestyle or whatever and, and having conversations with people you know they, people say that like you know I love God you know what I'm saying yeah. but, but it's like yeah but I don't know if that's what the word says like yeah. at this point where you are in life he might he loves you right don't get that twisted he's right. always gonna love you yeah but he's saying you not really working for me right yeah now. the or do you love me back do you for love real? me back and how do you know and like according to the way that i, I asked you did yeah, like yeah like my love language is obedience <laughs> like we always talk so about like right like like languages. oh what's your love language yeah. right with well, jesus's love language <laughs> is obedience like <laughs> <laughs> Right without cutting corners, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Let's, that's just, a fact. let's just get straight to it. You yeah. know what I mean? But um <laughs> and it's, but it's that that word obedience, yeah. we we um we use it in such a, a an odd way right that it has almost like a negative connotation or like yeah. a subservient connotation. Like we we say it in with dogs, right? Obedience training. I yeah. gotta I gotta whip them into shape, you know what I'm saying? Mm. But like for for, <laughs> for God and even with that though, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Why do you do obedience training? Like me and my boy, hmm. we were. Uh, I, I have Ooh, I have two pit man. bulls, right? Yeah, that's good. And I, you know, I'm going somewhere, and I needed my boy to watch them or whatever. So we were we were just walking them together so they can get to know each other. Mm. And my boy was like telling me like, yeah, I wanted to give him obedience training so that like I could let him go further and I could take him take him off the leash and I could let him wow. wander farther. Yeah. And it's like that God wants to do the same thing with us. Like yeah. the more you're obedient obedient the more i can let you do exactly what you want to do wow you man. can go further and further and further because i trust you yeah i trust that you're going to be doing my will so i could bring you to new territory i could bring you to new heights i could Jeez. bring you could get your own business now and i'm gonna grow that business even further it's gonna affect more people yeah i could bring you to a place of real influence you yeah. can be on you know television or whatever we want to call it you can be in government you can be in this right. on in this industry 
because I trust you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that's, that's, it's, that's amazing it's, right it's, there. It's righteous obedience, if hmm. you want to call it that. It's not uh, it's not domination. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. So Ooh, that's what okay. that submission, it's, it's submitting to, yes, I'm going to be obedient to you, God, because yeah. I know that your will is right for me. You know exactly what I need, and, and I really don't. Mm. A willful submission. I willful see saying, submission. Not a forceful submission. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. See, oh, so look at that, right? So like, because what that just reminded me of when you said willful submission, right? I guess I you said, said that, right? I agree. <laughs> I said I it. Take it. My bad. I but like, like that joint. Willful submission versus like a forceful submission, right? So you think about like the person who is like forced to go to church. Like maybe their parents are like, you got to huh. go. You got to go. You huh. got to go. We're going to be there on Sunday whether you like it or not. You're yeah. going you know, to put them church clothes on and you're going you're gonna to get in the car and we're going to church. Yeah. But that person, for them to find God that way, right? Or to establish a real relationship with God that way, you know, is, is difficult, right? Because it's forced. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But anybody who's ever come into that real relationship you know mm. what I mean? Like, has said, all right, I want you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I desire a relationship with you. That yeah. willful submission. I, here I am submitting myself. Mm -hmm. I submit myself, not somebody else submitting me for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm so not getting like, forced into it. Yeah. And, I, and that's, I'm, I'm glad that you said that, man. Because yeah. a lot of times, like, I feel, um, I'm, I'm so in love with God, right? And yeah. I'm so, like... I, I so want to share his word with everybody and yeah. I want other people to know him even more than mm -hmm. I know him. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, like, right. Because yeah. I want to learn new things from other people exactly. about God. And yeah. but, so, but it could, it could almost sometimes, ur I get urges to put it on people. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But I'm glad that you just said that because that, what you just said is going to stay, it's going to stick in my mind. It's like yeah. the, the whole analogy of forcing someone to go to church. Like they're not going to like it. You know what right. I'm saying? And you, you can't force the word on people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You think it only like, even with this podcast, it's like those who he, he wants to hear it and, mm -hmm. and benefit from it. Those are the people who, you know, are really going to benefit from right. it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like, we can't force it down people's throats and stuff like that because it's just going to turn them off even more. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, my wheels are spinning, man. Um, I'm thinking about like, uh, you know, how he said, you know, people are going to know you by your love mm. you know what i mean like he's like people will know my disciples by their love mm. and then he also says you know like uh we gotta be bearing fruit you mm. know what i mean that spiritual fruit or whatever right so it's like you know people you're not like all right the street preacher yeah dude stands on a crate on the corner i don't know yeah. why they always using crates but they stand on the crate a very very valuable uh it's a lot you could do with a crate you can do a lot with a crate. you can put stuff in it you could stand on top of it you could sit on it Dang, you, could, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot mm. to do. You could you could carry your whole like. These are great points you're making, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanna point that out. I'm about to go get a crate. That's what I'm <laughs> anyway, so Jay is out. Uh, uh, must be doing some kind of <laughs> crate commercial that I just don't know I about got a right now. Coming, brother. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, like these dudes, they stand on the corner, man. They yelling at, every, at everybody. You know, you're gonna go to hell. You're gonna go to hell. Repent, yeah. or you're going to hell. Yeah. That kind of thing. But it's like, does that work? You know, like do people see that and say, "Oh yeah, that that's man. appealing." Yeah, I I want that. I'm trying yeah. to be just like him. Yeah, I want God now. Mm. I mean, does it work sometimes? Maybe, mm -hmm. right? But it's like, what is Jesus and God really asking us to do, right? Like you look at John chapter 14, I think it's or maybe 15, when he says. I'm the vine. You guys are the branches. You got to mm. bear that fruit. If you ain't bearing fruit, then you're getting cut getting off, cast off. to the fire. Mm -hmm. So bear fruit, you know, and all throughout scriptures, you got that whole be fruitful, multiply kind of thing, right? But mm. what is that really saying? What does that really mean for us today? Yeah. Right? So you look at spiritual fruit. It's like, you got to be joyful. You got to be at peace. You got to be kind. You got to be loving. You got to be, you know, Long one suffering. who has self-control and mm. all that kind of stuff, right? But if you can do that, then people are looking at you like... Hey, I want what that dude got. Yeah. This dude always joyful. It's always peaceful. Always get along with people. Even when people, you know, kick him to the curb, he's still happy. Don't let affect him. Yeah. I need that kind of, whatever he got, those qualities, I want that. Mm. So that's why he's like, that's how you get people. You don't have to force, you don't have nah. to force this word down nobody's throat. You just show them your yeah. life. You show them the power of Christ operating yeah. in your life. You show them the fruit of the spirit in your life. Yeah. And then they want it. And you, and also like you can't get mad at people 
for re either rejecting it or just for being in ignorance, right? Yeah. Because it's like you were probably there at one point. Yeah, you know what most I'm definitely. Like you, you didn't know. You may have rejected. I know myself. I rejected. Yeah. You know, and and it's like you just got to be patient and let God. Like I said, you got to let the Holy Spirit bring people to Christ, man. And you got to, of course, pray for them and all of that type of stuff. And then just love them. Like, yeah. he ain't never tell you not to love anybody. So just love them. He said, I love the world. And mm. I gave my only son for the world, not for believers, yeah. not for the people who already wow. trusted and believed in him. Like, he said, yeah. for the world. So, you know, I don't know. what We just, this is what we do, man. We just be... <laughs> We just be rapping. talking, yeah, just rapping, <laughs> and it and it sometimes gets interesting. Man, my bookmarks in in the Bible app, uh -huh. pff, he be giving me some revelation. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yo, I, I hope uh, share, man, share that revelation. Ah, uh, man, man, I don't know. So these are things God hates. Oh, uh -oh. right. There are six things. This is Proverbs six verse oh, yeah, sixteen yeah, yeah, through nineteen. Yeah, yeah. There man. are six things the Lord hates. Mm -hmm. Seven that are detestable to him. Wow. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, mm -hmm. hands that shed innocent blood, uh -oh. a heart that devises wicked schemes, oh, no. feet that are quick to rush into evil, mm. a false witness who pours out lies, wow. and a person who stirs up conflict in the community. Dang, son. He says he hates those. He hates that. He hates that. I was like, dang. Let me check. Let me see if you don't I hear a lot of, you know, you don't hear what a few things the guy hates, man. Yeah. That's, 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 he don't like that. I don't know what's going to come with these bookmarks, but like. Yeah. That's like, the other thing, too, man. It's like the understanding, like, it comes over time. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you might, like, that scripture right there, I'm pretty sure it's going to be tied to other scriptures yeah, later exactly. on. Right. Like, the Bible says that he gives us line upon line, precept upon precept. Right. So, we get a little bit, what, a tittle here, mm -hmm. a tittle there. So, you get a little bit here and there, but then, you know, the Spirit just begins to glue all that together for mm -hmm. you to give you this, like, overarching, like, large scale picture of what the word is trying to say, man. It's beautiful mm -hmm. how it comes together over time, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? You start to understand why. Yeah, this part is here, and why yeah. that piece is there. Like, like, all right, I, you know, I was thinking about this, um, you know, I guess quite a while ago, right? But you know, like, a lot of people were asking me, um, like, if you were to pick up the Bible, where would you start reading it? Where would how would you answer that question? Like, somebody's like, hey, look, man, I'm trying to read this Bible now, I'm trying to get into it, man, you know, where do I start? Yeah, what do you say? Um, what would your answer be? Man, just personal. Just, just what what just came to me right now yeah. would be uh, like proverbs. Really? Yeah. Just because it's practical, mm -hmm. um, and like you can kind of like, it's just it's interesting to read. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even for a person who isn't, um, you know, like spiritual or whatever, it's yeah. like practical stuff in there. It's like nuggets. It's yeah, wisdom like, nuggets. Yeah, it's yeah. just like you know don't don't sleep too much or you'll or it'll lead to poverty you yeah. know what i'm saying work like the ant look at the ant and see how mm. the ant works it doesn't have a leader but yet it still works hard every wow. day like yeah it's just stuff in there that that you could apply to your life right away right away you know what immediately I'm saying? immediately yeah so i, like I would that. probably start them there and then i'd be like you know well understand where this revelation that this man who wrote this got it from yeah. he didn't just think of this stuff yeah this came from divine revelation that the holy spirit inspired and he mm. wrote it down yeah so, and then i, like I would, I would kind of take them through like now now let's talk about the holy spirit and now let's talk about yeah and and just bring it around and keep spiraling like all right so let's go back to genesis yeah now, you know what i'm saying and see how solomon got to that point yeah you know what i'm saying i like, like that though yeah because yeah. what would you well you know, I, I used to think that the best way was to start with the beginning, right? To yeah. start with Genesis, right? But then my personal answer started changing. It evolved a little bit, right? Mm. And it became, you know, like if, if somebody asked you, where do I start reading the Bible? My answer is now you start where you are. Mm. You know what I mean? Like what's going on in your life? Mm. What are the questions that you need answered immediately? Yeah. See what the Bible has to say about it. Okay. If you're dealing with, I don't know, the inability to control yourself or yeah. something like that, see what the Bible has to say about self-control. Yeah. You know, see what it has to say about, you know, how a marriage should be structured. Because that's, that's how I started my walk. You know what I mean? It's like mm. my marriage was kind of upside down. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, I need to kind of get this thing in order. Mm. Well... 
you know it's god's institution yeah. right what does he have to say about it yeah. maybe i should care about that a How little he bit want it to be? <laughs> now that i'm in this thing yeah. so i started looking to the bible because that's where i was like i'm dealing with marital problems what does the bible have to say about marriage let mm-hmm. me understand this it's the a beautiful thing about the bible man mm-hmm. in that there is nothing yeah in the world yeah that you cannot answer with the bible right right there is no circumstance that yeah. anybody on earth will ever go through and that they cannot find out how to address it mm. in the word of god yeah nothing yeah nothing, dog. like you can that's you true can, man. you could line up every person and mm-hmm. be like yo what circumstance are you going through that you just don't know how to get through yeah and they could tell you and you can go through the word it's and be like bible. god god, yeah. is god god got you right here yeah this is what he wants you to that's do amazing. whether it be like you pray and fast whether it be like you just pray you know yeah. like because you think about somebody who's like you, you just made me think about like a couple who can't conceive or something mm. like that right and you're yeah. like what's god got to say about that right and you're like he got a lot to say a about lot. that all right yeah go look go yeah. look and it's like what did what did this person do what did isaac do uh-huh. what did, you know what i'm saying wow like, and then it's, it's it's literally nothing. What yeah. man? What I'm a murderer, man. Like God yeah. can't use me. Yeah. Uh, look at Moses. Look at Moses. Look at Paul. Paul, man. Like hold up, yeah. hold up. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's like it's so much. You know, you, you might you might be the the, <laughs> the biggest. You might be the apostle. Savior. Yeah, you, <laughs> you might know what be saying? the savior you know? of a whole people. You might help <laughs> some people out, man. Right, right. So it's, it's like incredible, man. Yeah, but and, I like that though. And it's it's just like everything is that's the there. that's but this when i start talking like this this uh-huh. is the type of stuff where i get like man p- p- people need to know this like they yeah. ignoring that but I, I gotta cool out i gotta cool it's out. tough <laughs> though because it doesn't even come out of like a like a self-righteousness or nothing like that it's like you genuinely just want people yeah. to know what you know you know yeah. what i'm saying because it's like what is brought to your life right yeah exactly. like what jesus says i've come to give life in that more abundantly while yeah. the enemy comes to kill steal and destroy yeah and so you see people you know like living lives with their their you know we think kill still destroy like it's not Literally. necessarily like the fact that he's trying to cause you to die yeah you know what i'm saying which ultimately is the case but a little at a time mm-hmm. you know in in the various aspects of your life yep. you know what i'm saying yeah doubt. it could be as simple as doubt yeah fear right yeah complaining yep you know what I'm saying? Yep, confusion. Confusion. You know what I'm saying? Wow, confusion. Yeah, man. It's, I mean, it's a lot, right? So it's yep. like you just want people to to experience, yeah. with, you know, that abundant life that you're now living. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I, like, I'm not saying this, you know, like in some kind of cocky way, but it's like since I've started walking with Christ, my life is more abundant i have a joy that i can't even really explain to you yeah i can't really tell you like if you ask me like why are you always smiling like i really you know well part of it is i used to really struggle with depression Mm. you know what i'm saying but god jesus god through jesus has delivered me from that Mm. so like i kind of keep a smile now because i know i remember yeah yeah (laughs) like you know it it sounds insensitive but it's people out there struggling with depression you know what i'm saying but i'm here i'm standing like sitting here right to tell you that you can be delivered from depression through the power of jesus christ absolutely you know what i'm saying and now i wake up and it's like I know I've been delivered from that spirit, yeah. right? And so I, I have a lot of joy. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of peace. It's like when you've been, when you're facing like the thought of suicide, yeah. you know what I mean? Everything else that's going on in life kind of, you know, is, is minimal in comparison to that. So when you get delivered from something like that, mm. like I wanted to kill myself like every day for like a, you know, like a period of like three months or something like that. Yeah. When you get delivered from something like that, it's like when somebody tell you, oh yeah, you know, here's a large bill, you got to pay this bill or, you know, uh, you know, it's like, what? That's yeah. insignificant. That's insignificant. I, I got, I got joy. Yeah. <laughs> I got joy, yeah. man. I'm not worried about and anything that, that's thrown at me. That's interesting that you said that too, because you don't it, we're not we're not trying to say that we don't have like issues or we don't right, face doubt right, right, ever right. Or we don't have fear ever the point is that when those things come yeah. you have a resource you have someone That's who's it. saying yeah don't worry about it i'll take care of that he said cash your worries on me you yeah. know what i'm saying like 
he, he, you don't have to have that burden. You don't even have to really figure it out. Mm, 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 He's mm. like, don't don't even try to figure this out. I'm going to figure it out for you. Just listen to me. Again, Man. be obedient. Like, there are some, there are some things throughout mm-hmm. the word and therefore throughout us and what's going to come through our mouth that yeah. are going to be repeated. And one of those things is obedience. Yeah. You're going to hear that throughout the entirety of this podcast because it's so important and it's such a beneficial thing. Most definitely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but yeah, it's not like we don't go through stuff. Like, you know, we ain't up here saying like, man, we are untouched. Nah, we are holy. No perfect nah, lives. Nah, not That's at all. Sure. You know what I'm saying? We, I'm actually, we in, we in like weird spots, both of us in mm-hmm. life, but we have joy yeah. and abundance. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's, but, but, but what did Christ say? Oh no, it wasn't Christ. Um, the joy beyond uh, explanation. What is the scripture, man? Y'all know oh, a a beyond peace, comprehension. A peace a that peace, surpasses all a understanding. Peace that surpasses all yeah. understanding. And like right? I, I, I've experienced that. You don't understand you know? it because everything around you looks crazy. Yeah. But you going like, I got a peace though. Yeah, we good. What? And that's the thing, man. It's like, like ultimately. You can go through life with God or without God, mm. you know. And I I remember what it was like, you know, with without, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Without mm. that, like you just called him a source. Without that source, and then mm. and then now experiencing like, oh, I'm I'm you know I got I got him. Yeah. You know what I mean? I have him, and mm. I can just call on him, and I can just ask him, mm-hmm. you know, and he'll give me the answer. And he's he's not just some source. He is the source. Mm. Everything belongs to him. So whatever you need, you can ask him for. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And like I've seen so many just like miraculous things just by saying, God, look, I don't have it. I don't know how I'm, I don't know what you're going to do to get it to me. But I just know that you're my father and you're going to get it to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like and I, I even got away from kind of telling him the means by which I wanted things. You know, I used to be like, God, can you make this happen? Can you make that happen? You don't need to tell him how to do stuff. Just tell him what you need. You know mm. what I mean? Like, cause I used to, you know, try to give him instruction on, on, on <laughs> like, I need this job, so I just need you to tell this person to find <laughs> favor on me when I walk in there, and you know, and then just, you know, sign this part of the document yeah, and all that. Yeah. Then I can get the job. Thanks, God. Right. You know what I'm saying? But he don't need that from you. He don't need your instructions. He doesn't you know at all. Especially when the word says that he can do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ever ask or think. Or think. Yeah, according to the power working in you, right? So Bro. it's like. We don't have to tell him anything. He's already he got everything. What do we got to tell him? That that scripture is first of all, it's one of my favorite scriptures yeah. and one that I live by. Yeah. But it's so it's so deep. Yeah. yeah. He said exceedingly. He now to God who yeah. can do all things exceedingly and abundantly beyond what you can ask. Yeah. Or think. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like take your grandest idea of what you want for your life. Yeah. And he's like, I have something even better. Even better, you. man. Even better. You yeah. can't comprehend how it's going to happen right. or what's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to be so much better yeah. than you think. It ain't going to look like how you think it is, though. Right. Because right. if I tell you how it's going to look, you ain't going to do it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you told me, and we've heard, we, I think Miles Monroe had a sermon like this, but he was just saying, like, God can't tell you the entire vision each step Ooh. because you're not going to do it. Man. He's like, yo, like imagine if for those of us who know the story of Joseph. Yeah. And for those who don't, I know we got to probably wrap up soon. But, you know, I mean, Joseph basically was was he had a vision from mm-hmm. God and his brother sold him into captivity, um, abandoned him. He was yeah. he was he was locked up. And he was a slave. And then all of a sudden he he in a nutshell, he became like um, the chief of, of all of Egypt. Like he was like pharaoh's main dude type mm-hmm. of thing um and but if you told joseph hey this is what you're gonna have to do to become the greatest dude in the land type of thing you're yeah. gonna be right under pharaoh you're gonna be helping them stay out of famine you're gonna be feeding your family and wow. you're gonna be doing all these things yeah. you're gonna be a great man Mm-mm-mm. but let me tell you how to get there joseph probably would have been like i'm good like i'm not going through <laughs> any of that i'm not that. going i'm not going to jail yeah i'm not getting thrown in no pit i'm not doing none of that yeah but that's why he can't reveal it all he can reveal pieces to yeah. you though so that's why we have visions and that's why he give them to you right. because he's like this is where i want you to go so mm-hmm. he'll let you have that that thought in your mind of like 
you really believe you can do something great like yeah. you know what i'm saying oh i yeah. can i can i can he allows you to see yeah. yourself doing it he can see you yeah. because he wants you to be there wow yeah but he's not gonna tell you how he's not, not gonna, gonna tell you how not it's gonna, gonna tell unfold. you what it takes no the no, process no, no, because you might not do it yeah you might mm. not do mm -mm -mm. it that's it's incredible great. man it's great it's great yeah stuff. Yeah, and I, you know that goes back to a conversation we were having, and maybe this would be the last point that we wrap up, right? All right. But we were having this conversation you and I a couple of weeks ago about like why blessings aren't always good. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it sounds like a crazy statement, but sometimes God will rather take you through a process than just drop you a blessing. Hmm. Cause you don't, you know, like when you get a blessing, right? It's like, do you learn as much from a blessing? as you do from a process you know what i'm hmm. saying the process there's some development happening right yeah. right some things are being produced some things are being taken away some things are being you know what i mean like there's there's all this all this that happens you know to the person that goes through a process yeah. but the person who gets the blessing yeah it's just like oh okay thanks all right on to the next one no, it doesn't require change yeah it doesn't require development to receive hmm. a, a blessing yeah. you know what i mean so it's like it just goes back to your point like you know like sometimes he wants us and it's all about the ultimate goal like we were talking about this recently too right like the ultimate goal of god is you know and i like how somebody put this recently said not to tickle your fancy right the ultimate goal of god is not just to tickle your fancy he's not a genie mm. he's god right so it's not your purpose that he's concerned with it's his purpose that he's concerned with so what is his purpose his purpose is to make us right look more like his himself mm -hmm. and we can see what he looks like by looking at his perfect son christ mm -hmm. right so it's like the processes that he takes us through are to develop us right mm -hmm. i think there's a scripture i think it's romans 8 and 29 right something now. like that mm -hmm. okay yeah yeah so romans 8 and 29 it says for those for whom he did foreknow he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, hmm. that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Hmm. Right? So, and I'm gonna read the uh I'm gonna read the NLT version. All right, all right. It says, For God knew his people in advance, mm -hmm. and he chose them to become like his son, yeah. so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Yeah. Among many brothers and sisters. So <laughs> if you look at this, right, it's like God is, you know, he wants to bless you along the way, but his ultimate ultimate goal is to conform you to the image of his son mm. like he's trying he's trying to perfect something yeah so he's he's taking taking you or us you know in our messed up states and he's like all right let me get all these impurities out mm. let me get all you know all this foul you know stuff out of this dude defilement. yeah all this defilement you know all, all this <laughs> all this stuff but like let me get all this this dirt up out of here so so you know he can look more like more like my uh, my man who already good you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying my his son he said you know uh what did he say to jesus when he was getting baptized you know what i'm saying this, this is, is my son, son whom, I am, well whom I am well pleased and it's like us and our sinful nature you know he loves us because yeah. he pleased with us that's the difference yeah the difference. he still loves us because every father like you mentioned i think it was the first episode like you know, a parent loves all their kids, mm -hmm. but he ain't pleased with all of them. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. Yep. So, um, but yeah, man. So, you know, like if you out there yeah. and, you know, you dealing with, you know, like some situations or you going through some things, you know what I mean? Um, It might be uncomfortable. It might be hard. It might be tough. But ultimately, if you are in God's will, yeah. then you can know that all that you're going through, right, is for the purpose of you being developed yeah. to be conformed to the image of, of his son like he's trying to process some things right absolutely yeah and that's why uh, jay you know mentioned that other scripture you know all things are working together for the good of those who love the lord and who are called according to his purpose so you can be confident that whatever you're facing and you're going through has good reason behind it yep. god is not just allowing you to face these things without a greater purpose for your life yeah yeah and it's and it's one of those things too where just just sit back sometimes and just ask god like god i love you you know show me show me how to love you show me how to love you man so yeah but um this was our first jam session yeah hope yeah. you guys enjoy you know what i'm saying this is this is really what sparked 
the whole you know yep. idea of, of the podcast really is just these conversations that we would just get into from time to time yes yes i mean very often you know what i'm saying like we yeah. just call each other every day man and just you know um just talk about the word but you know really really what we did was just encourage each other mm -hmm. you know and hopefully you know us kind of having these jam sessions you know um allows us to encourage you in the same way exactly that exactly that man so stay tuned we got a lot of cool stuff coming and uh we'll see y'all the next time peace all right later Thank you guys for checking out this episode of the Word in the World podcast. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Please remember to rate, review, subscribe, and repost with the hashtag the Word X the World podcast. Also, we'd love to hear from you, so please send your questions, comments, praise reports, and testimonies. Basically, any and everything. We just want to talk to you guys. Send everything to contact us at thewordxtheworld.com. Have a great week, and be sure to check out next week's episode. Peace.